Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video, I'll be teaching you guys how to get started aerialing and hitting the ball. Um, in one of the previous videos, we talked about simply learning how to control your car in the air and just keeping it up in the air. But now we are going to add a ball to the equation. So to start you guys off with this, I recommend going into the psionics um, aerial training that they have pre-made for everyone on their, um, on their game. So click aerial and then click rookie and you should be good to go. So now what you'll see is the ball floating off of the ground a decent ways, far enough that you can't double jump to actually hit the ball. So that tells you that you're going to have to you know, aerial for it. So that means jumping, tilting back, and using your boost. And it's probably going to look something like that the first time that you that you hit one of these aerials. Um, so you're just going to come up here, jump, tilt back, you know, feather your boost a little bit, and just go directly into the ball. And these should be set up pretty well for you to shoot, obviously since it's, you know, just right in front of a big open net but you will probably miss high or you may not get a solid touch on the ball. Um, so, you know, go at your own pace, go at your own speed, and you know, you can miss them like that or something. Um, now, once you get comfortable with, you know, being able to like aerial like this, you know, just tapping your boost into it, you can start going a little faster. You know, maybe you wanna try to like hold boost down the whole time. Um, Maybe you want to, you know, use your flip to flip into the ball. For example, I'll show here. So here I'll go slow to it. You can jump, aerial, and then flip into the ball. And it'll get you more power. So you can use um, this type of aerial shot on a lot of low balls. Um, and you're going to get a lot of power on it. Now... In a future tutorial, I'll be going over like high aerials and fast aerials, but for these low ones, um, it's good to start learning how to just, you know, quickly aerial short, um, just like a short distance, and then still maintain your flip and use your flip uh, to give you that shot. So this training pack is fantastic for this. Um, it's like the perfect height to shoot um, from that position. And then it's also good for you to, you know, get used to just like normal aeroling like that. And if you can do that efficiently and consistently, then you will score a lot of goals in your games all the way up probably to platinum. They still struggle with aeroling. So that's the first drill that you guys should look into um, when you begin your training on aerials. The next training pack, the ball will actually be moving, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult but it'll also help simulate your in-game um, scenarios. So wait, let me show you the code for it real quick. Here is the code for the training pack. Uh, just put that into your training browser and then favorite it, and you'll find it in your favorites column. Um, and let's hop straight into it. So this one, um, besides the first ball, which is stationary, um, the ball will be moving and this will allow you to simulate more game type situations like that's a very common situation at a low rank for the ball to just be floating out in front of you and you just go nice and easy you know one jump fly up hit the ball just like that real nice and easy you don't have to make it hard it's probably going to look exactly like that and um yeah it's uh, pretty straightforward I'm actually making it harder on myself by doing it like that but um yeah or you can practice you know one jump and then shooting it stuff like that so and we'll get into arrow shots and arrow power shots and things like that um a little bit later but um really good to just help you start to get the feel of you know reading where the ball is going you can even go for some of these higher ones you know just take your time with the shot don't really focus on scoring per se, but just focus on making contact with the ball because that's going to be the most important thing. Eventually, you're going to be able to control, you know, like your shots and how they're going and then also like air rolling into your shots and stuff. So um, 
pretty simple. No need to learn how to fast aerial or anything yet. Um, however, in my next video, we're going to be looking into fast aerialing, which is basically just like double jump aerialing with your boost held down. So um, it's going to look like that. You go pretty fast. You can get pretty strong touches on the ball uh, and you just end up being quicker than everybody else on the field. So if I can double tap that, I cannot. So yeah, and we'll get into that in the next tutorial. So um, I hope you guys learned from this, learn how to practice your aerials and get started with it. Real basic, just like one jump. You can tap your boost if you want and just hit it towards the net. And you know, if you put in the time, you put in the effort, you're going to get better and you'll see results in your ranked games and you'll win more games. So um, I hope this was informative for you on ways to practice and I will see you in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide on Rocket League. Uh, in this episode we are going to be learning how to fast aerial and in my opinion this is the most overpowered mechanic that you can use all the way up um, up until around champ 2 when everybody is fast aerialing um, and then you may struggle. But um, if you want to climb the ranks as fast as possible and you want to just absolutely destroy people in the low ranks you need to learn how to fast aerial so um to start this off let's just go into free play and a fast aerial essentially what it is is you're using both of your jumps to get height while you're using your boost to get height as well so basically what you want to do you want to jump boost and then jump again while you're boosting make sure that you keep your finger off the left analog stick Otherwise, you're going to uh, end up flipping. So it would look something like like that instead of jumping. So you'll see people at high level like back flipping there. And that's because they tried to fast aerial, but they touched their analog stick or their analog stick had some sort of drift and uh, created that issue. So what you want to do, you want to jump, tilt back, and then jump again um, in terms of your jumping. And for boost, you just want to boost through your second jump. So if you're looking at the speed um, or the fast aerial, that's going to give you more of a straight up trajectory, something that's going to be very useful in defense primarily. You're going to be jumping, boosting, and then jumping again. Um, so you can see I'm jumping, boosting, jumping, and that's taking me straight up, and it's taking me really high in a very short amount of time. Just from that, I'm like halfway to the ceiling. And then the other variation where you're going very fast and very, uh, you know, you're getting a lot of forward momentum, which is something that I do with almost every single aerial that I do. Um, you're holding boost all the way through. Um, and that's going to give you the absolute fastest takeoff and the absolute fastest path to the ball. So you're going to just hold down the boost, tilt back, and jump again. So you boost, jump, and jump. So you boost, jump, jump, and you're up really fast. So this is difficult for a lot of people to learn because you like literally take your thumb off of the analog stick when you're doing it. So um, just come into free play. And, you know, just mess around with it. See how fast you can go. Try to 
fast aerial from one goal to another. You like you get up that fast, or you know fast aerial up to the ceiling, um, come back down and fast aerial again. And then there's also a lot of training packs that can help you with this. Um, my personal preference is um, this aerial aerials pack, which just works on normal uh, aerials. So like on offense, you know, you fast aerial up and then you shoot like so. Um, and this just shows you how you can incorporate it into in-game situations when the ball is very high, allows you to get a good shot on target. So um, my recommendation is to just practice it in free play for a while. It's going to feel very uncomfortable um, holding down boost and jump and your thumb might get sore um, from doing this, but the more effort you put into it, the more you're gonna get out of it. And trust me, when I say, when I learned this mechanic when I was in Platinum, it single-handedly took me from Platinum to Champ 1 um, without learning really any other mechanics. Just knowing how to fast aerial and being able to beat everyone else to the ball um, got me so far in the game before I was really even good or really understood what I was doing in terms of strategy and game sense. So um, if you can get this down, jump, boost, jump again to go for the slower or more more vertical aerial. And then for the forward fast aerial, holding boost the entire time. Um, and if you guys can get that down, you will dominate your ranked games. That is for sure. So anyways, Hope that was helpful and helped show you guys how pros and high level players get to the ball so fast. Um, start implementing that in your practice when you're practicing your aerials. Try to use it for all of your aerials um, and eventually you'll get it down and you'll just be dominating people and just beating everybody to the ball. So um, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you can implement it into your game. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to the complete guide to Rocket League. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at a replay from a Platinum 1 3v3 game. Um, we're looking at it from Shadow Panda's perspective on the orange team and let's hop right into it. Uh, so wave dash kickoff interesting choice for a kickoff. I personally don't recommend wave dash kickoffs at all. Um, I think they're bad, and um, the reason I, I don't prefer them is it really uh, hurts your opportunity to actually be between the ball and your own goal. You can see here he comes at it from a very sharp angle, and if the other team um, gets a really solid kickoff on this, it could be going directly into his own net. So um, I don't recommend a wave dash kickoff like that. Um, make sure you use your kickoffs by either driving directly into it or incorporating a flip like I recommend in my kickoff video. Um, so if you haven't watched that already, go watch it um, and that should help you a lot with your kickoff. So don't recommend that kickoff. You're probably going to lose it a lot of the time. And um, yeah, so this is... Okay, so... It seems like we have a lack of awareness in terms of where our teammates are because his teammate is actually underneath this ball and at a higher rank 
Um, this would be this guy's ball to go for. I don't, his landing was super bad and he didn't keep any of his momentum. Uh, so I guess this is okay. Uh, but I, uh, one of the biggest things I see at lower ranks is people aren't aware of where their teammates are and what their teammates are doing. And I just see a bunch of double commits like this. Like there's no reason for this guy to even jump for this. His teammates already on it and going for it. Um, there's no reason for him to jump. He should just be rotating to the third man spot behind his other teammate who's in the net. He should just be rotating behind his teammate, letting CT go for that ball, um, and then following it up after his other teammate goes. And here he's turning. This is not his ball to go for. Um, this is the person in net's ball to go for. I think the person who's in net right now, what's his name? Uh, Slam Sink. Slam stink is in net. This should be his ball. And there's a lot of space here. Um, but instead we're gonna see Shadow Panda just continue to ball chase and miss the ball off the wall. So um and this actually puts his teammates in a really awkward spot. So yikes. Yeah, he's just ball chasing and rushing everything. Like he's trying to play super fast when he doesn't need to. Um, ultimately, like what in the world, uh, this, this is absolute chaos. Um, I mean, it's okay for him to aerial for that, but his teammate should already have been going for it. Yikes. Okay. So this is good. He gets a one-on-one. -on -one. Nice. You know, let's see if he can pass it to the middle. Hmm. Basically he kind of missed the ball. I don't know where he's rotating to. and <laughs> Where are his teammates? This guy's back, AFK or something, and his teammate's bumping him. Interesting. So they pass up a goal-scoring opportunity to basically be trolling in the corner. So, yeah, interesting. So here, once again, this dude's just ball chasing instead of rotating correctly. Um, he should be going to his left, to that left corner boost. Instead, he's cutting all the way across the play and cutting off his teammate who is second in rotation and he's actually going for the boost on the wrong side of the field um yeah so he made the play super awkward for himself by rotating incorrectly and not playing patiently behind his teammate so here he needs to go left behind ct and let uh slam stink go on the ball first and then let ct go and then it's his turn to go for the ball instead he just cuts all the way across almost like he wanted that ball and then he takes the corner boost and ct um, is completely caught out because he's probably confused with the rotation and then he just doesn't react fast enough on the shot and it results in a goal um, so rotation is super important my intro to rotation video uh, should have everything you guys need in terms of rotation uh, strategy at least for for beginner level um, so hopefully that was beneficial for you guys and hopefully you don't look like this guy when you're in your games so here it's an awkward situation for him he should just be letting his teammate go also there's not really a threat of a shot there's no one actually threatening to shoot this the closest guy is his proof guy but he's not going to be close enough to actually shoot this as you can see, he has to turn away. Um, let me get back on to the camera here. So, and CT is right under the ball. Perfect position to actually take possession of this ball. And, um, yeah, Shadow just, like, basically fakes him. I'm surprised that didn't end up in a goal. So, once it, where is he going? Okay, so, my, this gameplay is, um, it's not good. Um, so once again, we see shadow cutting rotation for no reason, uh, and just following the ball instead of actually filling, uh, a position behind the player who's pushing the ball here again, he cuts rotation. It ends up in a goal. So I, I hate when this happens because players get rewarded for rotating incorrectly like this. This should be Slam Stink actually scoring this. Um, 
Like, Slamstink should have been in a position that he could have scored the shot. So, um, yeah, I mean, it worked, but it really shouldn't have worked. So, focus on rotating back post behind your teammates and not cutting them off like this guy is doing repeatedly. Um, this is good on offense, though. And they don't have anyone up there to actually pressure, though. And this could have been a scoring opportunity, but once again, there's no one no one up here on defense. Slamstink is playing goalie, which is not how you play Rocket League. You don't, you don't play with a goalie. Um, and CT is doing something in their defensive half for no reason while... Uh, <laughs> while Shadow Panda is trying to uh, trying to score all on his own, so this is uh, this is rough. So it looks like CT actually went for a shot there, which is fine. That challenge is okay as well. Slamstick needs to be going for that ball, and he gets beat to it. So um, not surprising. Um, very bad rotation, very bad positioning overall. Honestly, the silver 3v3 game that we reviewed, rotation and positioning was actually way better than this gameplay. Um, so, I don't know what that tells you, but I'd, why is he on the ball here? So, his teammates are in much better positions, or they should be, and they should be on the ball already. But uh, they aren't, so that's weird. And Shadow Panda loses a 50-50. We got all three. Okay, once again, he he's not rotating at all. He's just going directly for the play. Um, he needs to be going back post here. So instead of rotating, if I can move my camera. It won't let me actually move my camera. Um, maybe, okay, there we go, alright, so, instead of rotating into the play like this, he needs to be rotating this way to the back post, right here, letting CT go up here and challenge the ball, and then also allowing Slam Stink to come in here at the front of the net, or maybe even over here, and maybe even on the wall over here um, to play defense. And Shadow Panda should be filling in in the net. Uh, instead, we see um, Shadow Panda just cutting everybody else off and making the defense super awkward for everyone. And now we just have complete panic because the rotations got cut. So um, don't be that guy. Once again, I don't know why he's sitting at the front of the net here. This is his teammate's ball to go for. He just needs to rotate out and around and go back post. Um, but instead, he he like blocks his teammate from getting a good clear. Now we've got two guys on the ball double committing. Um, and Shadow is getting destroyed. No way. If this ends up in a goal, that's crazy. But... Um, they formed the triangle on offense, kind of, and now, see, so Shadow has no idea where CT is right here, and CT is most likely grabbing this back corner boost, and he has a good angle on the ball. Um, instead, he just cuts him off and, like, doesn't actually do anything really with the ball. He does pop it, but, but he doesn't pop it to anyone because there's no one on his team close enough to follow up, so... Um, he just awareness of where your teammates are um is one of the biggest factors also uh interesting play on offense here so once again we have a situation where there is one player pushing the ball on offense and two players on the team sitting back on their defensive half not actually participating in the attack even though the goal is pretty much wide open if the ball ever comes across the middle of the net um so they just need to focus on being closer to the play on offense. Once again, we got rotation being cut here. Um, Slam Stink should be going for this ball. 
uh, not Shadow Panda. It, it looks like Shadow Panda is trying to do everything, but he's ending up doing nothing and actually hurting his team. As a result, misses the aerial here too. So um, he can just wait on that. Like this is a really tough ball for the defense to get. If he just waits on the ground, he can have a much easier short aerial that he will probably have a higher percentage chance of scoring. Um, and also his teammates just need to score that. So a bit unlucky. Um, here he turns again. Like he's just challenging absolutely every single ball when he's getting beat to it. So um, he's playing hyper aggressive. And here he's rotating back incorrectly and actually completely destroys his teammate by hitting the ball around him. And I would be surprised if they didn't get scored on. Wow, that was very lucky, actually. Um, really poor play from Shadow Panda here. So what he should be doing instead of rotating um, towards the ball, I don't know why my camera is stuck like this. Um, so what he should be doing is instead of running down the field or coming down the field close to the sidewall, he should be rotating through the middle of the field, picking up this boost pad, this boost pad, this boost pad, this boost pad. And so after he picks up four boost pads, he has 48 boosts in the tank and he's in the net ready to defend while his teammates can go from the ball from a better position. Unfortunately, um, that is not what he did. So um, he actually like Pretty much, if this is a higher level game, that is a goal for the other team 99% of the time. So, um, very poor rotational awareness from Shadow Panda there. Once again, he's diving in on a ball that he can't even hit. So, it's better to just turn here and go back on defense. Um, not sure why he's aerialing. It looks like he's just panicking and trying to hit the ball. Uh, there's no reason to jump for this. There's no real threat. His teammate's on the wall for it. Granted, it's not going to be a good touch off the wall, but he should just be waiting to see what his teammate does before he completely overcommits to it and leaves a wide open net. So um, ultimately, I think this guy's biggest problem is rotation and patience. He has no patience for his teammates, and he doesn't want to rotate behind them either, which results in easy goals for the other team. So, um, yeah, and here, once again, he's rotating on the ball. Even though his teammate has this, uh, he basically bumps his teammate out of the way. So, a uh, really bad play there. This looks like a decent opportunity, and he doesn't score, but they own goal. All right, well, this is platinum gameplay for you, I guess. Um yeah so so here he needs to be rotating back post yet again he needs to be rotating rotating towards the net not towards the ball and uh here he actually does a really good job he just needs to put this on target pretty much and then he needs to read the the bounce off the post but they get lucky and now it's just a one goal game with less than a minute left um yeah i hate the wave dash kickoff so, all right, once again, he's rotating directly at the ball instead of rotating to the net. Um, instead of driving directly at the ball, he should be driving towards the back post of the goal. Uh, he would be in a much better position. That's actually a really good 50-50, and you see him get tangled up with his teammate. So, um yeah, awareness of teammates seems to be the largest problem besides the rotations. Um, once again, he's cutting rotation for no reason. He needs to be going back post here. Um, but instead, he just completely cuts off his teammate. They double commit, and this should have been another goal for the other team. Um, so basically, by rotating incorrectly, he is throwing the game for his team. So... Um, yeah, so as I was saying, being aware of where your teammates are is one of the most important things in Rocket League, and being aware of how much boost your teammates have as well is also a very big factor um, when it comes to trying to get better at 
uh, the game and your awareness in general. So um, a couple takeaways from this game. I'd say probably the biggest takeaway is to rotate correctly. And by correctly, I mean rotate behind the last defender that you have on your team and let the players on your team in front of you go for the ball first and then go when it's your appropriate time to actually challenge the ball. Um, another big takeaway, make sure that you guys are positioning on offense when the ball is in the offensive half and not leaving one of your teammates basically on their own on offense um, with no one there to actually score the ball if a pass does come. And then, uh, let's see, what else? So we have rotation, and then we have offensive pressure, and uh, another big one is just awareness and uh, awareness of your teammates. So always be thinking about where your teammates are, what your teammates are capable of doing, and let your teammates actually play the game instead of cutting them off repeatedly. So, And you're going to have much better results, and you'll probably win more games. So this guy's mechanics actually aren't that bad. Um, if he didn't rotate so poorly, he could probably be almost diamond, but, um, rotation is a very big part of the game and awareness is as well. So, um, I hope you guys could take something away from this game and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide for Rocket League. Uh, in this video we are going to be looking at how to improve your aerial car control. Um, that's really going to help you with your aerials and anything that you're doing in the air. So first we're going to hop into training and hop into free play and make sure that you have your unlimited boost on under your options unlimited boost if free play is checked. Um, so you're good to go so you can stay in the air and you don't have to worry about your boost so in our previous aerial video in our introduction to aerialing we talked about just moving around like so and even doing our hover and twist which is still a very good very difficult drill for new players to aerialing um, but now we are going to add in some air rolling so um, and this is using your left right air roll, not your directional, like one direction air roll, um, which I think this comes in handy a lot when you're just trying to, you know, place certain shots um, and position your car in different ways. So, you know, just staying up, um, air rolling, and keeping your car in the middle of the field. So, ultimately, your practice should eventually look something like this where you're air rolling a little bit you know like you can move around kind of flip around and you know come back up and i just mess it up but that just shows you how difficult it is and even somebody who's put a lot of time into doing drills like this can still mess it up and that means i can still improve um so just toss some air roll into this practice and um you know air roll different directions you arrow one way air roll the other way um, and really just start to get a feel for how your car reacts to different inputs and that's really going to help you in the air and in the future as we move on to more difficult aerial mechanics um, so that you understand just how your car moves and i think that's the most important thing so make sure you're always uncomfortable when you're doing this drill don't make it too easy on yourself and um, make sure you hit it for at least five minutes a day if you're looking to improve 
a lot. I would say do it for at least 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just calling this one the hover and twist with air roll. And it really helps with your recovery. So um, then once you're done doing that for the day, for the five minutes, to continue on with your progression, it's going to be very important to learn how to control your car from all angles that you're trying to go. Uh, so this drill where you just fly around the ball with ball cam on is going to be your next progression. So this is actually a very difficult drill to do. If you've never done it before, I recommend you open up free play right now and try it. Uh, it's very difficult. It's going to teach you how to control your bar, control your car backwards, forward, sideways, um, and really just focus on pointing your nose at the ball. And this should help keep you upright. So now once you've been doing one direction for a while, switch directions because we've got to train both sides. Otherwise, we're going to be uh, lopsided and one dimensional in our mechanical ability. And we don't want that. We want to be extremely versatile and be able to do anything within Rocket League um, and really, you know, create a big impact for our team when we're out there so we can win more ranked games. So once you, so the first times that you start um, trying to fly around the ball, one of the most difficult areas to control is going to be right here at the corner. And you're probably going to mess up a lot. Um, so just make sure you keep getting back up, keep trying it and uh, you know, keep putting in the work because this drill, uh, from my experience, is one of the most beneficial drills that you can possibly do so that when you're in an awkward situation, you can control your car and hit it um, in the air. So once you have that down and you understand how to do that, I was going to say air roll around it, but you can do like directional air roll around it, but this is uh, still even further in the progression. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do slaloms around the boost pads. So you're going to take your ball cam off and then go around this boost pad, go around this boost pad, this one and this one and there's um slalom um workshop maps in the steam workshop if you have this game on steam but if you don't have this game on steam you won't have access to those so this is the next best thing so if you can just do this and grind this for you know five minutes a day um along with your other car control you should improve very quickly now notice how when i'm doing this i'm not air rolling to make it easy on myself and stay so I'm facing forward the whole time. I'm only going to be facing forward one out of the four sides that I turn to. On the other ones, I'm going to be flying sideways and backwards. So um, just focus on trying to control your car, flying in the different directions. And the transitions at the corners are going to be the hardest. So make sure you're going slow enough and that you're staying in control of your car while you're doing it because this is a difficult drill. Um, and it's teaching you how to fly, you know, frontward, backward, sideways, and every which way in between. So make sure you're not actually touching your air roll while you're doing this, because that'll completely ruin the point of this drill, which is to begin to get you familiar with flying in different car orientations. Um, and then, you know, once you feel comfortable going around the outside, my game is freezing. All right. Um, then you can start going into the infield boost pads and flying around those. So, you know, just weave in and out, go around this one, go around this one, and just continue to make it difficult on yourself. Just keep moving around the boost pads, going in and out on them, and, uh, you know, keep your car from air rolling. And this is going to help you improve a lot very quickly because it creates a lot of opportunities for your fingers to move around and forces you to control your car in little tiny corrections a lot as you can see with my overlay um, and it also helps you with your boost control and understanding how much you need to boost to go in a certain direction so guys make sure you put in the time here um, because this will pay off in the long run even if you just use this as your warm-up for you know five ten minutes over the course of a couple weeks um, you're going to see massive improvement in your aerial play and it's going to really stick with you for the rest of your progression so guys I hope you learned something here and I hope you can implement this into your practice routine and uh, 
yeah, I hope to see you climb in the ranks. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to the complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we're going to be looking at backboard clears and sidewall clears um, to help you guys you know really defend your back wall and defend the sidewalls around your net on defense. Uh, this is an area that a lot of people struggle with so I'm going to break it down nice and slow for you guys in free play and then we're going to hop into a custom training pack that's specifically for this type of shot and we're going to go into that. So um, to begin with, we need to get comfortable driving on the wall while looking at the bottom of our car. So if you cannot do this and drive where you want to go while you're on the back wall, um, if you're just trying to drive up and down, then you're going to need to continue to practice your um, your ability to drive on the back wall, but this is going to be one of the best spots to defend in pretty much every game mode uh, For you know power shots for aerials for double taps and all sorts of other shots So get comfortable driving on the wall like this. So Eventually you get to the point where it comes pretty much second nature and you understand how your car turns on the wall and then we're going to get into how exactly you flip into the ball from your back wall. So um, some people clear the ball without flipping into it, but your timing has to be perfect. So what I'm going to recommend for you guys to do is uh, when the ball is coming in on the backboard, which I'll show you in a second, you're going to want to side flip off of the wall in one of two directions. So if your car is facing to your left, you're going to want to side flip to the right. So it side flips you off the wall. And if your car is facing to your right, you're going to want to side flip left, which takes you off the wall. And all this is going to do is give you more surface area to hit the ball. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to get good power after the ball bounces on the wall. So um, for example, if you flip the wrong way, you say you flip left, you don't actually come off of the wall and it's going to be very tough for you to actually read the ball um, when it's bouncing off the wall if you flip the incorrect direction. So it's very important to remember which direction that you need to flip off of the back wall to get a proper clear. And that's probably going to be the most difficult and confusing part of it for you. Um, but if you just go in and you break it down step by step, you should be good to go. So let's hop into this custom training and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and how to practice for it. So here is the training pack right here. Here's the code on screen for you guys. Make sure you uh, download that pack and let's hop into it together. So um, the goal here is basically turning a ground power shot into something off of our back wall. So we're waiting for the ball to bounce off of the back wall and then we're flipping sideways into it to get that clear. So I'll show you here, the ball is coming up and I flip sideways. I actually got a ghost touch on that. So there you go. So basically like that, um, wait for the ball to bounce and then you flip sideways into it and you get this big powerful clear that takes it all the way down to the other team's goal. Um, and then there's also shots in here from the sidewall, just giving you different angles. So just, uh, you know, take your time, have fun with it. And, uh, you know, try to get like, one or two run throughs from this training pack in in a day 
um, you know, do this for a couple weeks and you should be clearing the ball off the backboard very effectively. This is an area that people struggle with even all the way up into the highest ranks in the game. People will still miss the ball when it's bouncing off the backboard and miss the timing. So really put, put in the time, put in the effort and, uh, you should see some very good results and you won't be getting scored on as often if the ball ends up on your backboard. So um, I hope this was informative for you and I hope you guys uh, have now learned how to clear the ball off of your backboard with as much power as possible. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we're looking at some intermediate level positions and rotations um, within 2v2. So um, let's hop right into it. So in the intro to positioning and rotation we talked a lot about the offensive position that looks like here's the ball, here's your teammate or you and here is your teammate in the middle with the other team position like this or this person could be back post um, so we talked about that position but um, one specific variation that i did not talk about in terms of transition on offense um, actually looks more like your teammate pushing the ball here and then what exactly should this second person be doing on offense? Should they be trailing here like this, just in case the challenge comes off the wall? Should they be more in the middle like this um, so that, you know, maybe the challenge gets pushed this way? And both are correct in their own right because it really depends. And that's, I think, the hardest part about understanding positioning and 2v2 especially is a lot of times you're guessing where you need to be and kind of assuming what position is going to be working the best or what position is going to work the best so it's going to do determine you're going to determine where to position behind the ball based on the direction that the opponent is challenging from so if your opponent is challenging from the corner here they're attacking the ball this way you're going to want to position more like this, more towards the center of the field, so that if the ball goes this way, anywhere on this, then you can pick it up and you have a good chance to score. Because more than likely the 50-50 is going to go that way. Now, in the same way, if somebody is challenging from here and coming at the ball like this, there's a good chance that the ball is going to go this way. So positioning more like this might be better. Now, keep in mind, if you do position over here, you are leaving a lot of field open. So personally, regardless of direction that this person is challenging from, I'm going to stay almost right behind them. Um, keep in mind, I'm still keeping space just in case this challenge goes bad. But if there's someone challenging from the side, I would recommend playing to th like right in line with them to just slightly inside of them towards the middle of the field and this is just to keep you safe and make sure that the ball doesn't go over your head immediately when somebody challenges the ball now we can also talk about transition offense um, when you're attacking and they're on the back foot say you know they're rotating back to net like this so as the second player, 
Um, it's going to be very important that you determine what the defenders are going to do. If this defender is going to challenge, then it would be very bad for you to be positioned like so. However, if this defender looks like they're just going directly back into the net, you're perfectly fine being here, and it's actually a good opportunity to set up an attack. So um, it's going to come down to reading the defense and understanding their position and understanding the direction that their cars are facing. So if you can see this particular player and their car is facing back towards the net, then that means you're okay to stay here in the middle of the field and be open for a pass. Um, however, if the car is facing the ball, it's going to be important that you turn around here. Uh, you should probably turn to the left here and circle around like this. And that way you're blocking all of this field space that was open if you didn't turn around. So that's what you should be thinking about in transition offense. Um, now, if we look at a defensive position here, um, more often than not, when you play defense, you're not necessarily going to be stacked up, you know, in your goal or pushed back in your half. A lot of your defense is going to be happening in a fast break style. So say this is the other team here, you have one player here and you have another player here on the other team and they're going this way. Most of the time you're going to have a defender who is either trying to shadow them or they're like the last back, say this, say there's a play up in the corner here and they overcommitted, and the guy who is right here is really trying to hustle back, grab this boost and help. So more often than not, you're going to see a lot of 1v1, 1v2 situations that look like this. So when they're pushing the ball down here, it's important that you stay shadowing them, whether you do that this way um, or you come across the play and you shadow them this way. That way, when they hit the ball towards the net, you're already coming in uh, in the same direction as the ball to intercept it. So... Um, so let's look at what happens if your teammate is further away rotating back. So you're going to have to determine whether or not your teammate is going to get behind you before you challenge this ball or not. So if your teammate is not coming back fast enough to get behind you before you're going to have to challenge, then you just wait, wait, wait. The ball gets pushed up here. This person's really hustling to get back. They get behind you, then you go. Um, it's very important that you don't go immediately on most of these because say you go immediately, but they hit the ball around you and this guy's not going to be back. So your job as last back is not necessarily to completely stop the ball, but it's more to just buy time for your teammate to get back to the back post. Now let's take another example where your teammate's actually already behind you. Now your job is just to challenge this ball and make them give the ball away so that your teammate can pick it up and then you guys go on offense. Um, so this person is dribbling the ball down. You challenge, 50-50 pops out. Say this guy picks up the ball. Then this person's shadowing here while you are rotating back behind. You get behind him and then he goes. So always be thinking about it as a cycle where say you go for the ball then your teammate goes for the ball, then you go for the ball, and always be trying to come behind your teammate instead of cutting them off from the front. Granted, there are some situations that you are going to have to cut in front of your teammate. Um, I'll show you one of those right here. So say your teammate is in the net, super awkward situation. The ball's being pushed here by this guy and the, the other opponent is right there ready for a pass into the net and here is you um, rotating back into defense now do you think it would be very effective to rotate just to the net here and let them get this pass off and let them shoot probably not it's going to be more effective especially since your teammate is in a very difficult situation to cut in on this play try to cut off the ball try to stop it and help your teammate out. Um, this also applies if your teammate has low boost, which you know sometimes they'll give you a quick chat indication that that is the case. But other times you're just going to have to know or assume that they have low boost based on their car body language. So um, 
that's pretty much it in terms of intermediate positioning and rotation. I hope you guys picked up quite a bit from that and you can apply it to your games. Um, if you follow the rules that I am telling you, you should rank up pretty well um, and you should understand the positions that you're getting into just a little bit, uh, a little bit better and understand them faster. Um, and it'll make your games a lot easier. So hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to the complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we're going to be looking at some intermediate to advanced rotation and positioning um, in both offense, defense, and in transition. Um, so if you remember what we talked about in our first one, we talked about a very common position that you will see a lot in 3v3 that creates this triangle. So um, this triangle is still going to be very common up until very, very high ranks. So if you want to see a variation of this, sometimes what's going to happen is in transition, let me just back this up, the ball will be about right here. One person will be pushing the ball this way or possibly even this way. And you'll have somebody trailing here and then somebody trailing here. Um, if this person in the back doesn't have boost, then they're probably going to be coming across here to pick up that corner boost and filling in this way. So um, this central person needs to be very aware of where this back teammate is. And this is an area that a lot of people struggle uh, when it comes to ranking up and positioning effectively within their team because if this person in the back here already has boost, then they're pushing up into the second man slot, and this person should be filling the middle lane, right? Um, what I see a lot with students is they will do one of these weird shimmy things and come in here like this, completely shielding this guy from, uh, from playing, basically. Instead, this guy's going to have to completely rotate in here, and then he'll just get cut off by the second man. Sorry, there's a bit of a mess on the field there. But um, essentially what this guy needs to do is he needs to actually look and see what this guy is doing in the back. So if this guy is going for boost over on this other side, then you fill in behind, you take the second man slot, and you end up somewhere in here. Um, knowing that this teammate is going to be rotating eventually into the central spot. Um, so the second person in transition needs to be aware of that. Now, if this, if this guy has boost and he's going to be filling that second slot, then the central guy should be filling the central role. So, um, most of the time you're going to see this person who's trailing the ball, filling in, in the second man slot. That's going to be around right here. Um, while this person's in the corner and the central field person is going to be filling the middle. Um, however, in some cases, like I just talked about, where this back person doesn't have boost, then this guy is going to need to fill that second man slot just in case there's a quick pass, and then this guy in the back can fill the central spot um, after you know he gets boost and can move up field. So that's a position that a lot of lower... Um, to mid-level players don't quite understand. I even see higher level players not quite understanding that and that comes from being aware of where your teammates are on the field. 
So that's one key position. Another key position that we're going to look at here um, is going to be um, somebody is dribbling the ball down the field. They have the ball here. Um, sometimes it's a little bit confusing at high level to know where the person who's trailing it should be and how close they should be. And ultimately it comes down to where the defenders are. So say there's a defender here, there's a defender challenging, and there's a defender right here. So um, if this person is trying to fill in from the back here, um, they're going to want to be positioned basically mirroring this defender. And this is like super high level stuff that you're going to be doing probably subconsciously. And then your third is going to want to basically mirror this guy. So the objective is if the ball ends up going off the ceiling or something, or it spits out over here, this guy's going to want to be in a position to beat this defender to the ball. Um, and vice versa, if the ball comes out this way, then this guy is going to want to be in a position to beat this defender to the ball. Um, so that is a, that's a huge factor. Most of the time this is done subconsciously while you're playing. Um, but if you're really trying to improve, try to actively think about, I need to be in a position to beat the next closest defender to the ball. Um, of course, if you're on defense, you may not necessarily want to position like that because you might be a little hyper aggressive there. Um, but it's all going to come down to situational awareness. So um, let's look at another scenario. So say we have a defender on the wall here and we have someone in the net and then we have another defender here um, and we're on blue and we're pushing the ball this way. Um, typically, if they're giving you this much space, if you're the person who's on the ball, say you're on the ball over here, you're going to want to make a play that causes at least one defender to commit to you. And more than likely, it's going to be this guy. This guy's going to commit to you or the guy in goal is going to commit to you. So one of the best possible things you can do here um, is, you know, obviously you need to be aware of where your teammates are. So if one of your teammates is in the middle, you can go for a pass. Um, of course, after you've baited this guy to challenge you, if you pass before you've baited him to challenge you, then somebody's going to cut it off and you're going to get scored on. So uh, make sure you bait the guy to challenge you first and then pass the ball. Or if you're dribbling, um, you know, obviously flick it past him. This back guy is very important in this position because if this challenge goes through and this guy loses the 50-50, it's all on your back guy to actually defend the net. So as this challenge is coming in, this person needs to be turning this way and say the 50-50 is a good 50-50, then he can just continue his turn and face forward again. However, if the 50-50 is bad and he's already turned this way and say the ball comes off the wall here then he's in a good position to then turn and get the ball so if he was facing forward he wouldn't have been in a position to do that and he would have been in a bit of trouble so um if you're this last back person you need to constantly be turning when challenges are coming in and if you're here in the middle you should not be the one who's turning away from the play because you're needed to score. If you're turning away from the play too much, then the ball's going to come out to you and then um, you're not going to be able to actually score it. So um, always be aware of what's happening, where your teammates are, and also where the defense is. So um, another key point that I think a lot of people miss is that when there's a bunch of people on the backboard, you do not want to hit the ball hard if the ball is here. You do not want to hit the ball hard at the backboard. Uh, they're just going to get it. And I think that's one of the biggest areas that people uh, struggle with at mid to high gameplay is that they don't acknowledge where the defenders are and they just do what they think is going to work without actually um, calculating what would actually happen. So instead of just giving the ball up here, best play is to dribble this and bait somebody to challenge you. Um, even just getting a 50-50 in this situation can be very powerful for your team because these two guys on the backboard are not going to be very effective on a ball that comes off the sidewall here 
or on a ball that rolls out to the middle. So it's all about being aware of where the defense is um, and how you can exploit it. So just keep that in mind as you're playing. Now, when it comes to defense, um, that's a whole different beast. So um, most of the players that I coach that are between the ranks of, I'd say around platinum to champion two, they struggle with knowing when to play defense on the backboard. So the position that I'm going to recommend that you defend from, if you guys are playing as a team, um, if the ball is here, you're going to need one guy on the ball, probably one guy on the backboard, and one person in net here. Now this is going to change up quite a bit depending on the situation. So um, there are times that nobody is going to fill this ball slot um, because it just doesn't make sense for it to happen. An example of that is if the opponent is dribbling the ball and the ball's on the ground and they're not going to be able to power shot against the back wall. Um, then you're going to have one person in the net and then one person cutting this mid pass out. So if this pass comes, they cut it off. Uh, so this is all situational awareness that you're going to have to be cognizant of while you're playing. So ultimately this slot is probably the most important. So that person is either filling this back slot or they're going in the net. Um, and you have to be very aware as a uh, third man. So I label this as third man, uh, but technically they're probably second man, depending on what's happening. Because most of the time, if the ball comes past the first guy, then you're going to see the person in goal picking that up and then he goes in goal. So um, one, two, three, pretty basic. Um, and then also, you know, this person who's trying to cut this passing lane, if they cut the passing lane, then the second person is going to fill the mid slot and this first person is going to fill the trailing spot and you're into your offense that we've just discussed. So this is probably a lot of information, probably pretty tough um, to conceptualize to begin with, but hopefully through uh, some of the replay analysis and some of my discussions on that, you guys can better understand exactly what I am referring to. So um, hopefully this is useful. Once again, just remember that on offense, you typically want to try to make a triangle. And I'm going to preach this throughout um, my course. So on offense, you want to create a triangle. And on defense, you want to create a cycle. Just like that. So always be aware of where your teammates are where your teammates are going and try to begin to um realize how much boost your teammates have as well as that's going to be a big factor uh, when you're transitioning into offense and setting up different opportunities so i hope this video was informative um, and helpful for you guys and i will see you in the next one Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we are going to be looking at everybody's favorite mechanic and that is the air dribble. Um, how to do it, how to set it up, and how to score goals with it. So I think the most important part of learning how to air dribble is truly understanding what to do when you're on the ball in the air. 
And uh, I think there's no better way to look at that than to actually hop into a private game, turn on your game speed to slow-mo down here in the settings. And so what this is going to do is this is going to slow down your game speed so that you can um, actually stay under the ball and uh, start to begin to understand what you need to do uh, when you're air dribbling. So we're going to hop in here and you'll see like, how slow I'm going even though I'm trying to go full speed. So you may also want to have um, unlimited boost on here so that you can you know, do this a little bit more efficiently so you don't have to be picking up boost pads. But basically to do an air dribble, you just need to roll the ball up the wall. Um, and then once the ball is up the wall, you chip it off. You can air roll your car to the side or if you want to do it to the front and then you boost through it like so. You're basically just trying to keep your car on the bottom side of the ball. My setup there was a little low, um, but we'll try to get a better setup in this next one. So the beautiful thing about playing in slow-mo um, is that you can really figure out where your car needs to be in relation to the ball so that you can carry the ball into the opponent's net. So here I just come off the wall, I air roll, I go onto the ball and I hit the ball. That one wasn't very good. I w ended up really high on the ball with this first touch you can see here. Um, so what you're going to want to do is actually not hit the ball quite so far away from yourself off of the wall so that you can do an air dribble more efficiently. But this is basically just the very raw beginning. You've never done an air dribble before. You need to learn exactly how to do it. Um, hop into a custom game on slow-mo and uh, you know hit the ball off the wall air roll off and you know try to follow it up off of the wall this also helps with a lot of other mechanics if you're trying to learn um, how to get better in the air slow-mo is going to be your saving grace so let's just leave this game real quick um, and hop into a training pack that I made specifically for this for both ceiling shots and air dribbles. It's a very good pack. Um, here's the code on screen right here for you. Uh, make sure you add this to your favorites and we're going to hop right into it. So basically to set up an air dribble, you just want the ball to be rolling up the wall fairly slowly, come off of the wall. You can air roll your car into it and then keep yourself under the ball. Um, some people prefer to air dribble with uh, ball cam off and you're on car cam. I don't prefer that. I actually prefer to air dribble using air roll right the entire time. I feel like that gives me more control. But um, for newer players who don't quite know how to do this yet, um, just coming off the wall, air rolling to the side that the ball's on, getting under the ball, and pushing it into the net. And that's that's pretty much all there is to it. You just need to chip the ball off the wall come off the wall, chase it in the air, get underneath it, and then try to push it upwards. Um, this is a hard uh, hard goal to actually stop or a hard shot to stop at a lot of low ranks because people aren't familiar with uh, people being able to push the ball higher and pushing it over them as they're aerialing. So, um, so it's a, it's a great way to get you guys started into some higher level mechanics that are going to make it very difficult on your opponents and hopefully give you more opportunities to win games. So um, there's your short little air dribble tutorial. Tried to make this one pretty quick because uh, it's not a very complicated mechanic and uh, I just want to get you guys in the game as soon as possible and scoring. So um, hop into custom training with these setups, practice jumping off of the wall, getting to the ball, and then pushing it into the net. Pretty basic stuff. So uh, I hope this was helpful for you if you're trying to learn how to air dribble. Um, and I hope you, you know, utilize slow-mo to understand how your car's coming off the wall and how you need to be positioned under the ball. And then also, you know, utilizing this custom training pack to practice the setup and then um, carrying it all the way into the net. 
So uh, anyways, guys, good luck on your training. Keep grinding, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we are going to be looking at the Torque Flip and the Wave Dash. Um, these are two mechanics that are very important for maintaining momentum um, and gaining momentum within Rocket League and um, helping you move around the field more efficiently. So let's hop into free play. Let me just turn on my unlimited boost in free play here and we'll be ready to go. So first I want to teach you guys the torque flip. So the torque flip, essentially what it is, is your, it's a, uh, it's boosting and then corner flipping, diagonal flipping. Um, and that gets you to supersonic very fast. So, um, so you just be here and you're supersonic already super quick, super easy. You don't use very much boost, um, and you're ready to go. It's very effective when you're trying to rotate quickly back on defense. Um, just do this once and you are supersonic all the way back to your net from midfield, basically. So um, that's a big one that you guys need to learn. So essentially what I'm doing here for this torque flip, I am boosting while I'm driving forward. So I have my throttle and I'm boosting and then I'm jumping and I'm turning a bit to the right and then I am diagonal flipping while I hold boost. It's very similar to the speed flip, but there's no flip cancel, um, and it gets you to supersonic. You can also do it the other way if you prefer, if it's more comfortable for you to jump and turn this way and diagonal flip, um, but I just prefer turning to the right and then diagonal flipping to the left. Uh, so, so once again, it just looks like boost, jump, turn, and flip. So once again, boost, jump, turn, flip, land it, and you're good to go. Super fast, super, super efficient, uh, best way to get back on defense when you have some boost in the tank. Now let's talk about, about the wave dash. So what a wave dash is, if you guys are not familiar, is essentially a flip cancel on the ground. Um, so you're jumping and then you're flipping forward or in a direction and your flip is getting canceled on the ground. For example, you got like side, uh, wave dashes, and then you also have like backwards wave dashes. Um, but essentially that's just what it is. It's a flip cancel on the ground. Most of the time, the biggest area that you guys are going to want to use it from is actually from the wall. Um, so I'll address that first. So when you're doing a wave dash off of the wall, um, you're going to want to practice it on both sides. Essentially what it is, you jump off of the wall and you air roll to whatever direction you need to air roll to, to land on your wheels. And then you're just going to want to front flip right as your back wheels are about to touch the ground. So it's a good idea to understand how to forward wave dash from the ground first. Um, and then move up into the wall. So you're just going to want to jump, tilt back, and then front flip. So um, same thing goes off of the wall. You're just going to jump off the wall, turn your car, tilt back, and front flip. Um, and make sure you're doing it fairly quickly, otherwise your flip is going to run out and you're not going to be able to do it. Um, so once you guys have figured out how to do the wave dash off of the wall pretty easily from both sides because we got to train both sides. Um, then you can move on to doing some 
uh, wave dash chains and some shuffles. So essentially what that is going to be is kind of like diagonal uh, wave dashing, but then putting multiple side or diagonal wave dashes together. And this allows you to go very fast with no boost um, and you can do it pretty quickly. So if you're looking to chain wave dashes together, the most important part is in between each wave dash. Um, you need to jump the second that you land so that you don't go very high. So if I were to jump again here, then I'm like, I'm going super high and it's tough to actually chain them together. Like my flip is running out. So the second you land it, you need, well, when you do the flip for the uh, wave dash before it, you need to tap X almost immediately after you execute the flip. So you do the flip and you're jumping, you're basically tap, 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 tap on your jump button. And that's going to keep you low to the ground to allow you to chain them better. Um, and it just looks something like that. So um, get comfortable wave dashing in different directions, whether it's left, whether it's right, whether it's forward, whether it's backwards. Um, and this is just going to help you with your overall car control in general. So wave dash, super cool mechanic, um, super important for maintaining momentum off the wall, gaining speed off of the wall and rotating back when you don't have boost. Um, once again, uh, we covered the torque flip in this video, which is boost, turn, corner flip, and boost through it. Gets you to supersonic very fast. And we covered the wave dash, which is just tilt back and front flip into the ground. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope this was helpful in uh, different ways of keeping your momentum and going faster. Um, and wave dashing just looks cool. So you know, flex on your friends if, uh, if they can't wave dash yet. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something, hop into free play and go try it for yourself. And I will see you in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video, we're going to be doing a replay analysis of this Diamond 2 2v2 game from Dama. And uh, let's just hop straight into it. We're going to be looking at what they do right, what they do wrong, and how they can improve um, so that you guys can use it in your games as well. So, interesting attempt for a fast kickoff by the opponent. Uh, Dama does well there, though. And uh, pretty pretty standard stuff going on here. His teammate gets beat. This is fine. Yeah, this is fine. It was a really good job not to panic here. Most players would panic when this ball is going over their head and jump for it, which isn't terrible if they can jump high enough to push it to the corner. Um, but Dama does the right thing here and plays patient. Uh, getting bumped here is not good though. Ooh, almost scored the double touch. His teammate rushes this just a bit. Um, he could have tried to, well, no, he had to go for the block, so that was good. And Dama also played super patient there um, and waited for the opponent to go for the ball. So, so far what I'm seeing is actually pretty good here. And he's picking up the boost when his teammate's going. This is good. He's aerialing. Oh, he missed it. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, surprised it didn't score but uh, we take those. So uh, this is good. His teammate's going for a bump, and he scores the dribble. This was actually a really clean play. Um, so 
It's good. His teammate baited out the challenge, and then his teammate went for the bump. Probably threw off his rotation, and then the last defender just didn't rotate wide enough, and he took advantage of it. So, um, really good job there. Overall, there's just a few minor mechanical mishaps that are going on. Um, so, I've said in previous replay analyses that I think that the second person should always be cheating on kickoffs in 2v2 because of reasons, you know, exactly like this. So, when the ball dies right in front here, they have a good chance to just score. So, he wins the 50-50, scores the goal. Um, if this guy's teammate would have been closer, he would have gotten, gotten a 50-50 there away from the net. It would have been fine. But once again, we see another one going for boost. But he does find a deal with the pressure there. And he's positioning pretty well behind his teammate as well. Um, I, I think he's positioning really well, actually. And uh, now he's kind of in a bad spot. Nice. And his teammate gets a touch. But he power slide turned just fine. So... Gameplay is looking okay here. Um, he should not have hit this ball away from himself so far on his first touch, and then he definitely shouldn't have jumped for the ball on his second touch. Here, it's important to take control, and he can actually start moving this towards their net. So if his first touch is better and he gets around it a bit more, then he can set up a dribble for himself and get a really good opportunity in a one-on-one. -on -one. And even here, there's no real reason to try to rush this and force this um to try to hit it over the defender because he's not really even challenging that fast so he just kind of gave away possession but the other team is struggling he goes for a bump wow okay well we take those for sure um poor execution on the bump to be honest but a uh, good job by his teammate to get a nice powerful shot on target so now they're up two to one um they're looking pretty good here and honestly the gameplay is not terrible um, which is pretty much what I expected from diamond players. So, uh, yeah, that's a tough save. So once again, we just have some mechanical problems going on. So like, this is not a difficult aerial or it should not be a difficult aerial as long as he does like a double jump aerial, like straight up. Um, but he goes so far forward that then he can't actually catch up to the ball and go higher. So um he needs to just slow down a little bit there and take his time lucky it wasn't a goal so um, teammates pushing the ball down doing a great job i personally wouldn't i i would personally recommend him being a lot closer on this i feel like he's giving his teammates so much space that if the ball does come out in an advantageous position he actually can't score it um, so being closer gives him a better chance to score an opportunity like that. And he also just basically took himself completely out of this play. So he turns like he's going to shadow, but then he never completes the motion to turn around, even though he's going to get beat by the opponent. And, uh, and now his teammates in basically a one-on-one, -on -one, which he handles just fine. So, um, not that huge of a mistake. Now I don't like this pass out from his teammate here. Uh, this just seems a little rushed and a bit unnecessary. And then the opponents are panicking. Uh, good shot towards the middle of the net. And his teammate just whiffs the net completely. Um, but it was a good opportunity that they created. Here he's doing a great job playing like shadow defense. Pre-jumping that. I, I don't know about this play, but he shadowed just fine. He should just, you know, come into the net, power slide turn 180, and then be out facing the middle, and he'd have a good angle on this. Um, but he just panics a little bit, but they don't score, so not that big of a deal. Here his teammate's going to dribble the entire team, but uh, wow, they do score. So once again here, it looks like he's just kind of buying a ticket, not really participating in the play. He has full boost, so it's not really a danger if the ball were to get hit, say, over his head or behind him because he'd be able to get back. And the defense isn't really in position to actually win this challenge when they dive in. So him being close would allow him to help, you know, like punch this ball into the net. Um, but his teammate does a great job on the dribble, does a really good job, you know, going fast after that bounce on the backboard and, and scoring for him. So... 3-1, they're looking really good here. He could use to be a bit more aggressive on offense, um, but it's, uh, it's working. 
So, oh, that's good. Aerial. Wow, really fast from the opponent. So here he should be going faster to this ball. He's aerialing very slowly, which is something I would expect out of a diamond. So make sure you guys are practicing your fast aerials and going as fast as you possibly can to the ball in the air because this is a scorable opportunity um, if you go fast enough. But here he's doing a great job rotating back, and he actually hits the ball backwards. Now this is a huge learning point for people who are um, around the diamond rank or under what you it's a lot of times it's beneficial to actually hit the ball backwards towards your side instead of having to um, challenge the ball and always trying to be hitting the ball forward this allows you to keep possession this allows you to get time to grab boost and uh, and keep the ball away from the opponent so really good play there and then his teammate gives up possession but um, it was the right idea and that is a tough position to be in because this offensive player can really cut the ball hard and do a number on him so um, tough spot to be in he probably should have dove for it anyways but but uh yeah once again that's a really tough spot that his teammate left him in um and i think he did the best he he could have done there really good kickoff very strong um, he should just be rotating out here and his teammate should be going. So here I don't really like how he was rotating out. He was rotating on the ground where his teammate would probably be challenging from. Now if he wants to rotate up on the wall, I think that's fine. And if he wants to rotate more through the midfield, I think that's fine as well. But sitting right in the middle of the play can be uh, a bit tough on your teammate to try to have to, to have to try to adapt to. So there, that's a really good pop. And he misses the pass off of the back wall. The idea is there, and I think it's really good. He just flips the wrong way. Um, yeah, and loses that opportunity. Good 50 there as well. Uh, his teammate comes flying in for no reason. Uh, kind of a weird decision by his teammate to dive in here because clearly uh, Dama here is on the ball first. And his teammate should just be waiting for him to go. So now he's in a one-on-one -on -one and he misses the boost. Oh no. Oh, and he gets scored on because he greeds for the corner boost. So here, after you miss that mid boost, you cannot afford to go for the corner boost as well. You just have to rotate through and grab as many boost pads as you can um, while still staying in a good shadowing position. So that's a bit unlucky, but um, you know maybe they can get it back. That whole thing pretty much started from his teammate double committing. Uh, so, not really his fault there, but a bit tough luck going for that back corner boost when he probably shouldn't have. So, good control by his teammate. Good 50-50 and a pass out, and he misses the pass, but it's fine. This guy's actually positioning really well here. Notice how he's rotating to the opposite side of the field, the direction that the opponent is going to most likely hit the ball. And he's already over here for this ball that's coming towards the right corner. Um, and then he can just turn on this and dribble, which he does. So really clean, really good stuff, and uh, good effort. So defense just stopped it there. Good 50 from his teammate. Uh, this is going to be a difficult position. Again, ceiling shot attempt from the opponent. And really good musty flick ceiling shot. See... The way you defend ceiling shots is to go for these immediately. You don't want to give them time to actually set this up. So the second that this guy is going up the wall, the second he chips this ball off of the wall, Dama should be flying for this, and he should be aerialing to the ball as fast as possible so that this guy doesn't have the opportunity to even set up his ceiling shot the way he wants to do it. But, you know, nothing to take away from that shot. It was a really good shot but the defense definitely could have been better. So if somebody's setting up to do an air dribble or a ceiling shot, guys, just make sure that you challenge as fast as possible if you're the first man. Um, and then you hopefully won't get scored on like that. Um, it'll put some more pressure on them and they hopefully won't be able to, you know, hit a musty flick on you. So, uh, so now they're down by one with a minute left he needs to be challenging this because his teammates behind him so we talk about this in our e intermediate positioning here so his teammate has rotated behind him and he's going to be at the back post 
he needs to challenge this to get the ball out of this guy's possession for his teammate to take care of but instead he he just continues to turn away from it so he needs to go directly at this right now um, and dive in so that he can get the ball away from the opponent and into his teammates possession uh, but instead he turns away pretty lucky they didn't score there um, yeah and it might actually turn into a goal for them it was a good try once again I think this guy's position on offense is really textbook um, his mechanics just may not be where they should be to um, continue to climb so here he has no boost. He should just take this down and dribble it, but uh, he does that, and his teammate's stranded. I don't think his teammate had much boost here. Let's actually take. He had a lot of boost here, so he should have been much closer. Um, I think his teammate is a not quite as strong of a player. Um, he needs to be going for this though. His teammate does nice, and he gets the boost. This looks very promising for Orange as well. Um, nice and a little chip and an aerial oh he misses the shot oh that is unfortunate yeah he needs to be scoring this that is really unfortunate um, yeah his teammate didn't have any boost unfortunately to actually follow up on that shot so that's that's too bad he really needed to score that shot if they wanted to win but wait uh, close um, but yeah, I think overall this guy's playing very solid. There have been a few mistakes, and I think those mistakes have been the uh, leading factors to the other team scoring. Mainly just, yeah, some slowness. Um, he needs to work on his pace of play. Playing a little bit faster, aerialing a little bit faster. Um, I think you can learn a lot from his position on offense in this game. I think he does a great job of actually predicting the direction that the ball is going to be going. Um, and it, uh, it didn't necessarily result in goals this game, but, uh, it will for sure if you continue to play like that. Uh, I think his teammate wasn't quite as strong of a player, and I think they could have been doing a bit more on offense besides just dribble plays, um, but that will come with time. So, I think the biggest takeaways for this guy, uh, are to... Continue to learn how to aerial faster. Um, really get the fast aerial down. And, you know, continue to progress with his dribbling skill and understanding of uh, defensive rotations. So, that's pretty much all I have for this analysis. Pretty good analysis for a Diamond 2 player. Um, and I hope you guys learned a lot from it. So, uh,. You know, take what I've said and implement it in your games. And, you know, hopefully we'll see you up in Grand Champion or even Supersonic Legend. So I'll see you in the next video. Hello everybody and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. Um, in this video we are looking at the air roll power shot or the air roll shot um, and it's basically exactly how it sounds. Um, you're just going to jump, air roll, and then shoot. So you're you can just practice the mechanics of it here. The way I prefer to do these power shots or these um, air roll shots is to air roll just a little bit and then use a diagonal flip to hit the ball with the corner of my car and that gives you more power 
Um, you can also do this to air roll this way and then front flip. If you air roll to one side or the other and then front flip, you're basically going to be doing the same thing. I just feel like I get more power when I do the diagonal flip. So that's why I do that. Um, so there are a couple of training packs that are very good for this type of shot. But I'm going to show you my preferred training pack for this. Um, and that's what I'm going to recommend for you guys to use. So it's this air roll shots pack from Yiza. Here's the code on screen for you guys. And this is going to give us a lot of examples of shots that are at different angles from the net. So like this one is pretty far to the side. It would be pretty difficult for me to shoot it unless I came around it. So shooting it from this angle would be pretty difficult. Um, so the idea of an air roll shot is to get around the ball and allow you to shoot the ball on target uh, even if you aren't facing that direction initially. So you basically are coming around the ball and shooting it. So um, this incorporates short aerials and it also incorporates some air rolls. So, uh, make sure you're comfortable with your car control before you start learning how to do this. But um, I recommend that everybody learns how to shoot this way if they're, you know, planning on advancing beyond like champion one, champion two, because uh, this will allow you to actually, you know, put more shots on target from more difficult angles. Granted, you don't always need to do this on all of your shots. But more than likely you'll get used to doing this on the majority of your shots and you're going to want to actually air roll like that to set up your shot and make it a little bit more accurate and give it a little bit more power. Um, so yeah, I'm basically just air rolling in the opposite direction so that the belly of my car is facing the net. And then I'm just flipping in the direction that my wheels are facing and you get um, the arrow power shot. So uh, pretty basic, there aren't all that many moving parts to it. You just need to be comfortable with your air roll and then being able to flip into the ball powerfully. Um, and this is going to take some time to get used to, but trust me, it is definitely worth it to learn how to shoot this way and to shoot the majority of your shots like this because you get a lot of power um, helps a lot with accuracy and as you can see um, it's pretty intimidating so if somebody's on the other team um, they're not going to want to defend very many of these shots because they're coming in fast and from a difficult angle so um, yeah just go ahead use this training pack get comfortable with it get comfortable air rolling both ways so you're not just comfortable, you know, like shooting from one side, but you're also comfortable shooting the other way as well. Um, and you can see my inputs on the controller. So it gives you a little bit better, uh, you know, example of what exactly to do. You can even, you know, try to go with an upside down type air roll for your shot. Some people like that, you know, you can air roll the opposite way. You can do like a 360. There's a lot of ways you can mix it up and work on it with different forms of practicing. So um, just hop in, take the time and put it, put the effort in and you'll see results for sure. So um, I hope this has been informative for you guys on how to do these air roll shots that you see a lot of high level players do to help them put the ball on target from tight angles. And I hope you guys can implement them into your game as well and i will see you guys in the next video
Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this episode we are going to be going over um, a mechanic that is highly requested typically from people around the Platinum rank um, and that is the Ceiling Shot. Um, ceiling Shot is a very basic mechanic that looks pretty cool and gives you a lot of scoring potential. Granted, it is a very dangerous mechanic to use in 2v2 as you're going to leave your team back on defense for a long time. So um, I have a pack here that I've actually made. Let me upload it real quick and give you guys the code for it. So there's the code on screen for you. And um, this is going to give us a good setup into our ceiling shot. So ceiling shots, essentially, um, a ceiling shot is just having the ball roll up the wall. You go onto the ceiling. Uh, you come off without jumping off of the roof. So you still have your flip. And then you flip into the ball at an unexpected time. So there's multiple ways to go about this. Um, the most easy and straightforward way is just to follow the ball up the wall, boost through it, drive onto the ceiling, and flip into it like so. Now this is not my pref preferred method, but this is the easiest way to accomplish a ceiling shot because um, you're basically just driving onto the ceiling upside down, controlling your car, getting yourself set up, and then flipping into the ball like so. My preferred method, however, is to jump to the ceiling um, and I think that allows me to set up for my shot a little bit better. Um, if you're newer to the game, that's going to be more difficult, but you know, definitely worth a try to practice. So I'll show you that here real quick. So you just go up the wall, jump to the ceiling, um, and then sometimes I'll air roll around the ball. It gives me a little bit better opportunity to control what my touch is. So the key to a ceiling shot is the setup so you're going to need to pop the ball off the wall so that it's high but it doesn't hit the ceiling just like that so the biggest way to start with a ceiling shot to start learning how to do that is just practice the setup practice boosting into it where you're hitting the ball high but the ball's not hitting the ceiling and then once you can do this fairly consistently you're getting pretty decent setups you're not going too fast and you're hitting the hitting the ball forward um, with power and hitting it high as well um, then you can follow the ball onto the ceiling um, and try to go for a shot once you end up on the ceiling you might get a little disoriented um, because you're going to start turning left to go right and right to go left because your car's upside down um, so that's definitely something that you're going to have to get used to uh, but honestly, it's it's not that tough to learn. Eventually, you'll pick it up pretty easily. And this shot will definitely impress your friends. If you're a little bit lower rank, they're going to think, wow, this dude is so cool. He can hit a ceiling shot. That is a high-level mechanic. But, um, but you'll know that it's actually not that difficult. And you've put the time in to actually hitting the shot. So once again, most important thing, waiting for the ball to roll up the roll up the wall just higher than the curve and then driving directly into it, popping it off, making sure it goes towards the net and then you just follow it onto the ceiling here. You know, fly after it and flip into it and hit it into the net. So once again, the setup is the most important part of the ceiling shot and I will hop to the other direction to show you. So on the other direction, you're just gonna to wanna to practice the same exact thing. Practice it on this side as well. Um, the ceiling shot is a mechanic that is not a necessary mechanic to learn. You can definitely get to Grand Champion uh, without knowing how to do a ceiling shot at all. So, um, so keep that in mind while you're doing it that it's not necessarily going to be a necessary mechanic to rank up however it does look cool and you will find yourself in certain situations where it's going to be extremely useful so um, when you're learning this just take your time with it if it's easier for you 
once you get this set up, you can air roll so that your car is facing forward and flip into it like that. Uh, most likely it's going to be uh, better for you to flip under the ball instead of flipping at the ball. So make sure that your car is actually positioned lower than where the ball is um, when you're falling. So here you'll see I fall, I'm under the ball, and that allows me to get more power with my front flip. So um, that's pretty much it for the ceiling shot. It's a very basic mechanic. Um, that pretty much anybody can pick up and learn pretty easily. Just type in the training pack code and go to town and have fun with it. And then you can try to experiment with more things like, um, like a musty, try scoring that, um, a bunch of different, different opportunities to, uh, really show off your creativity with this shot. So. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you took something away from it and learned how to do a ceiling shot. So um, go ahead, hop into training and hit your first ceiling shot today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. Today we're going over one of my favorite drills within Rocket League that I created uh, to work on how fast uh, you follow the ball from the wall and even uh, to help yourself learn how to deal with some awkward shots from the wall when you're on defense. Uh, so let's hop right into custom training and I will get this pack for you. Here it is quick follow from wall here's the download code um, go ahead and take that code put it into your browser and uh, favorite it because you are going to be using it quite a bit at least if you want to progress quickly so the whole objective of this is to have the ball bouncing off of the wall having you landing on the wall jumping off the wall quickly and following the ball so I'll demonstrate that here so the ball rolls past me I go to the wall I jump off and I hit the ball. Um, so this is a, uh, a drill that is fantastic in terms of learning how to control your car directly off of the wall and help you kind of see how your car's positioned on the wall and how you need to move your car uh, depending on where the ball is. So you see there I came off the wall basically upside down or backwards so that I could actually reach that ball because if I was air rolling to the side, I probably wouldn't have gotten a very powerful touch on it. So um, it's about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's pretty much the name of the game with this drill. So um, you basically just let the ro let the ball roll up uh, on the side, go up on the wall, you jump off on the wall after it and you go for it. You don't actually jump, you just continue boosting up the ramp and it'll actually take you directly to the wall. And then you're just going to want to jump off of it very quickly and get a touch on it. So this is going to come in handy a lot in like 2v2 where you're trying to get multiple touches on the ball before um, you know, passing the ball to your teammate or going for a shot. Um, it's going to be very effective in 3v3 as well as you're working on you know, trying to follow up the ball quickly from one of your other touches. So um, that's basically it for this drill. Uh, it's a very powerful drill. I think it helps immensely and it helped my development immensely. So 
Um, I hope you guys can benefit from it as well. I would say run through this pack, at least hitting each one of these uh, shots once, not necessarily trying to score, but just trying to hit the ball once. And then as you continue to get better, you know, try to do each one twice and then do each one three times and then try to do them like three times in a row, stuff like that. So just continue to make it challenging for yourself. Continue to try to push yourself and make yourself uncomfortable and you will continue to get better. So anyways, I hope this drill was helpful for you guys and I hope you can implement it into your game. Um, that's gonna do it for me and I'll see you in the next video.